over these. Go on. Right. Okay. Um, did you have a question about one of them? Yeah. Well, I hit it when we go over it. All right. So here we go. Oh, and look at they were nice and helpful. I didn't even pay attention to that. When you're adding or subtracting exponents with expressions, you simply combine like terms. So your exponents don't change. All right. Are negative five and four exponents? No. What are they? Coefficients. So coefficients get actually just multiply. So negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. I'm going to write the black one because the blue one appears to be running out. So negative 20. Copy your base. And then we said when you're multiplying, you add your exponents. So negative 20 x to the 7. That one should have been pretty straightforward. Yeah. Okay. Then we move on. Now, this one has a step before we handle this because exponents have to happen before you multiply, correct? Okay. Yeah. Now, do you remember I said you have to multiply all exponents? Well, right now, I only see one exponent, but there are actually how many inside that set of parentheses? No. There's actually three. There's one on this, there's one on that, and there's one on this. Yes. So that means that it's actually negative 2 to the what power? Second power. M to the sixth power. And N to the second power. Good. Now, is that a four, you guys? Okay. Is it a negative four? No, no, this, I meant. Is that a four? Okay. Yes. Now, yes, we should do this first. Negative two times negative two is four. positive 4. So this is really 4m6n squared times 7mn4. Okay. Now it's essentially back to a number 5. What are you going to do with the 4 and the 7? Yeah. If it's better for you, all the What do I do with the 7 and the 4? Multiply. 7 times 4 is 28. What do I do with the exponents on the m's? Add them. What exponent is on this m? So 6 plus 1 is 7. n to the 6th power. Done. For number 5? That was, that was pretty, actually, basic. Uh oh. That's, for number, that's pretty basic. That's, basic. that's pretty basic. Well, the. the the good point is that there are not a lot of straight exponent questions because they're used for things like when we're doing quadratics and we're distributing and stuff like that. That's where they show up. There might be a couple like this, but it's not the main focus for sure. Yes, honey. For number five, why don't you multiply the exponents? No. Because there's multiplication, and you said that in multiplication you... Oh. Thanks for proving your own point there, dear. Okay, division. What do I do with the 52 and the 4? Divide them because they're just coefficients. They are not exponents. What's 52 divided so by 4? When do you 13. multiply exponents? Here, Matthew. And power rule? Yes. So 13. What do I do with these guys? Subtract, Subtract them. 12 minus 2 is 10. Okay. Now I'm going to handle the multiplying next. 4 times 2 is 8. C to the... 10. Okay, now this is this one. You are subtracting expressions with exponents. Why can I actually subtract these? They're both the yes, the same they are like terms. If those exponents were not both 10, I couldn't subtract them. But because they're both c to the 10th, those are like terms and I can subtract them. 13 c to the 10th minus 8 c to the 10th is 5 c to the 10th. Subtract the coefficients, keep that like term. Okay. What am I going to do first in number eight? Multiply. Yes, you're going to do the numerator first. You're going to multiply. Two times 10 is 20. W to the third. Okay. Now, what is that number, you guys? Is that an eight? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can you divide 20 by four? 24. Yeah. <laughs> It comes out to a decimal. So in this case, what I would do is I would reduce it instead. What do 20 and 24 have as a common factor? 
Four. Four goes into 20 how many times? Five. Four goes into 24 how many times? Six. Okay. Actually, I'll do this. Okay, now it's division. So what do I do with the three and the eight? I subtract them. Three minus eight is? Okay. When you do straight subtracting, the answer is always on top. Now, you might be able to leave that answer. That might be fine. By the way, it happens to be these are the same thing. Okay? Whether it's next to it or on top, those are the same thing. You might be able to leave those answer, that answer depending on what the directions say. If the directions say you can only use positive exponents, then we have to change it. How do we change it if it says we can only use positive exponents? What are we flipping? The five, five. Only this, not the five sixths. The five sixths are separate. That negative five only belongs to that W, correct? Yeah. Okay. So the five six would stay exactly the way it is, and the W would flip to the bottom. All three of those are the same exact thing. Go ahead, Alvin. You couldn't have a five over six W negative five. This? Yeah, but then you can't be on the bottom, right? Because it's negative. Negative one? No, not this way. You are correct. Yeah. I wouldn't no, that would not go on the bottom. Okay? Moving along? Okay, what do I have to do first in number nine? Um, I have to distribute that exponent to how many numbers? Uh, three. three. Okay. So it's negative three to the Six, A to the 12, B to the 18, minus 25, A to the 12, B to the 18. Okay, what do you want me to do next? Next. Yeah, I need to get, I need to figure out what that coefficient is. Using your calculator, make sure you use parentheses. So this is going to be parentheses, negative three, parentheses, carrot six. Without those parentheses, it's going to tell you it's negative every single time, and it shouldn't be because this is a positive number, so it should be a positive answer. Tell me again one more time, 700 something. 729? Yeah. Everybody's okay with that? Okay, now check your variables. Do you have like terms? Yeah. Okay, so then what can I do since I have like terms? Add. It's subtracting, Matthew. Subtract. Subtract. What's 729 minus 25? 704. I'm guessing it's going to be a number. A, 12, B, 18, and that one is done. I'm going to wait a second, but then I'm going to go move 10 and 11 up because you're not going to be able to see them. Please tell me 10 and 11 are the last two. Okay, good. I'm going to start erasing up here. I won't erase the bottom one quite yet. The last one is 73. Does anybody need the bottom two anymore? It's eight and nine. Everybody has what they need? All right. So, in number 10, what are we going to do first? We're going to distribute the exponent. Okay. When I distribute the exponent, it becomes 9 to the second, and it becomes m to the negative 8. Okay. 9 squared, m to the negative 8, times 1 third, m to the 6. Okay, now what do you want me to do? Okay. Nine squared is? 81. 81. Okay. 81 m to the negative 8 times 1 third m to the 6. Now what do you want me to do? Okay. 81 times 1 third. 81 times 1 third. It's a good thing you got a calculator. 27. 27. I heard you whisper, but I don't know what you said. Is that what you said? 27? Okay. What about my m's? M negative two. M negative two. Nice job, Carson. Now, might be okay leaving that. 
but you might have to also be prepared to make that a positive exponent. What does the negative 2 belong to? But what does it belong to? It belongs to the M. So is the 27 going to move? No. No. 27 is going to stay exactly where it is. Only the M squared is going to go to the bottom. But that's if it says negative X, no negative X. Okay. Okay. Okay, finally, number 11. What do you want me to do first? Distribute. Okay. Okay, so the first one I'm going to leave the way it is. The second one I'm going to distribute. So in, on the, in the numerator, it will be x to the third. In the denominator, it will be x to the sixth. Okay. I don't really need those parentheses once I've distributed, do I? No. Not really. Because it just says multiplying, but I already have a dot there to tell me to multiply, so I can get rid of this. Okay. Uh, you want to do, what do you want to do next? We got a couple choices, a couple options. You want to do numerators and then denominators? Okay. So four times? One is four. Okay. X to the fifth times X to the third is? X to the eighth. Okay. X squared times X to the sixth is? x to the a okay now what now we divide when we divide what do we do with our exponents subtract them is four an exponent no so eight minus eight is zero so this is four x to the zero but what do you know about anything to the zero power that's one does the four go away no because the zero only belongs to the x. So this is one, while well, four times one is four. The other thing you could have done, and I think this is probably what Zach was doing, is this is the same number, top and bottom. So those cancel and turn into a one. So you could have done it a little bit easier earlier, that's all. Okay, was it really that bad? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. With your help, it wasn't my help. All I can do, just so you know, all I can do the day of the Regents is smile from you from the other side of the room. Where are we taking it here? No, no. you'll be in the high school gym. Oh, you can cool. look at us? I can look at you, but the that's it. They will be there. Yes, Lucas, they will be there. Uh, uh, it's not it's right. I swear oh, yeah. this is yeah. Who's that? Uh, I'm I don't even know who that is. Who's Bay? You can be the high school man, but he's also the baseball coach. If you say a single word, you are in the football coach. Okay, real fast, you guys, let's go. We gotta get to today's lesson, so let's go. Real fast, we're going over answers. Just set the white packet off to the side. I'll come get those in a few minutes. Okay, answers. Leo, do not write them down. Answer. All right, consider the step function given by. Okay, so step number one, make uh, get it step number one. I did this make one. sure that your your problem is graphed correctly. And now I know how to do it. Never mind. Okay. Um graph it. We did. State the range. How come I didn't write it in grabbies or as an inequality, Nolan? Why? Yes, because it's a list. There's no continuity. It doesn't, it never touches anything that isn't one of those three numbers. Well, honey? Right, curly graph. Does it matter what order you put the numbers in? No. Matter. Matter doesn't order. Order doesn't matter, you mean? Does f of x have any zeros? It's been a while. What does it mean to have a zero? Touch the x axis. Touches the x axis. Nice job, Matthew. Does it ever touch the x axis? No. Okay. Step function number two is shown on the grid. Answer the following questions. Evaluate each of the following. So this just means go to where x is negative 4 because that's what's missing. Go to where x is negative 4 and tell me the y value. Oh, I remember. Yes. Oh, I got those right up. See, it was easier. This 
this is where Matthew says, I just guessed. And I said, you did not just guess. You used an educated guess. And that's why we got them right. Oh, you all use your brain. Brain. I got this wrong, actually. I don't know how to do that. The letter A. That's fine. Mallory, just so you hear, because I know you did yeah. Mallory actually skipped that part, it sounds like, right? Went down, did part C first, wrote it out, and then went back and evaluated it once she had a good now. Same thing. That's pretty smart. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Different ways of doing the same thing. That's awesome. Can we go over how to do this again? I don't know how. What? This. I just told you, silly. Wow. Okay, so the x is what's missing, right? Okay, so I go on the x-axis to negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. I read up, and I read what the y number is. And that's it. Um, I don't know what that child's name is. States that the range of the function is from negative 3 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 4. Is he correct? No. No. That would include all of the values. We don't want all of the values. We only want negative 3, 2, and 4. There's no way for that function to equal negative 2, which this implies it can. Right? Writing equation for the step function, how'd you do? I did great. You did good? Yes. I goofed up and found it. Okay. Back side. All right. So you had two graphics. Got that. How do we do? Good. We did good. By the way, I don't know that we ever talked about this. Do you know what that is? No. It doesn't yeah, it's not the same. It means this amount doesn't reflect how the rest of it is counted. So if you have a graph that needs to start at 120, instead of counting all the way up to 120 and then starting the numbers you actually need, you will see them do this from time to time. And that just says, this counts differently. The counting that I want starts right here. So then they start at 30 and then 35, 40, 45, 50. That's all. All right. All right. Number four was the one that people were asking me about. Stewart International Airport at Newburgh. And by the way, this really does happen at airports. New York charges for parking the way many airports do, by the partial hour. Their short-term parking rates are shown below. Explain why the total amount you will pay for parking in Stewart is a step function based on the number of hours you park. Why is it a step function? Because it adds $3 for every hour. It adds $3 every hour, every hour or every part of an hour. Is there any way you're ever going to get to a number like $4? No. No. They're always going to be multiples of what? They're always going to be multiples of two. That's why it's a step function. You're not ever going to get every single number. There's no way for it to cost you eight dollars to park there. Well, probably jump. Okay, she'll be in a little bit. She's got an appointment, and she'll be in around nine fifteen. Thank you. Okay, you too. Bye. Um, Emily's absent as of right now because she's in a appointment at eight fifteen, but she'll be in at nine fifteen. But the nurse's office calls, but the nurse's office calls and says, "Why is your kid absent?" Um, yeah, and you went to daycare with her. I did. You did. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, all right. How much would you have to pay if you parked for five hours in twenty-two minutes? Okay, so five hours. So one hour or part thereof. Hi. How much is one hour? Three bucks. So fifteen dollars. Yes. And then whatever the twenty-two cents times three would be. No. 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 Three bucks for the twenty-two minutes. Yeah. So it's three bucks for a part of an hour or a full hour. Look at see. But that is how they do it, isn't it? So twenty-two yeah. is a part of an hour. That's like. 20, if you go above five hours. Oh, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. 22 isn't part of an hour. It's like one third of an hour. It's not like one that's third of an hour. That's, 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 that's part of, part of an hour. Part of an hour. <laughs> I don't know if the problem has to do with the minute. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> I know it is, isn't it? So we got $15 for the three for the five hours. 
three dollars five hours 15 bucks the partial 22 minutes part thereof what? seth uh, told us part of so another three dollars so it's a total of 18. what if it was like one second would still be 18. oh my god yes yes in that case i'd probably go drive around the parking lot a little bit because i'm not <laughs> What are they? Is that what you were using? Yeah. Liar. No. <laughs> After how many hours of parking will you get the maximum charge of thirty dollars? Nine and a partial. Because remember with the electrician. Why is it nine and a partial? Because you can pay nine and the minute you hit nine hours, nine hours is twenty-seven dollars, correct? Five minutes is gonna cost you what? Another three bucks. So it's nine hours and any partial amount. Oliver and then Seth. I said twenty-four hours. Yeah. Because yeah, that's what it said on the thing with that. Well, you the maximum is your maximum is two dollars. You can't yeah. more than that. Right. But after you so get ten hours. But after I hit there. nine hours and anything. I might as well be so there for 24 hours. Airport, the the yeah. So I'll you're reach it at eight. nine hours. So anything from nine hours on, it really doesn't matter, does it? Nine hours and on, I'm not running out of there. If I'm hungry, I'm going to go get something from the restaurant because it's going to cost me the same amount. Maybe. Did you know that if you have like a half of a dollar bill, you can exchange it for a full dollar bill? Yeah, no, you you. So you okay, I would not do that. I'm going to do that. That's called defacing government property. <laughs> it's called being <laughs> smart. And you, you just you recorded it. Can you do it on? All right, yellow papers away. Yellow papers away. Matthew, not take any ideas. I'm going to do that with a $100 bill. If you do it with a $100 bill, you get an automatic $100 more $100. Huh? Yeah. Oh, um ladies and gentlemen how is bringing around to you your assignment for tomorrow uh, yeah we've had this discussion a couple of times now but if you want to know if you're doing well on it you could probably jump on to an office hour so i can just throw my answer how about mallory wait i don't think we can yeah mallory go and try to answer and then text me mallory do not give anybody Oh, 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 no, you went blurred it out. No, Cassie, if you buy me ice cream, I'll give you the answers right from Mr. Rowe. No. Here we go. I go. I do them with the questions. We with her. Here we go. They're going to be all correct. Here we go. Matthew, you need to do Matthew. Matthew gets help from Mrs. Rowland's stump house. Still gets questions wrong. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I got a hundred. Like, okay, you guys. I got twelve minutes. Zip it. Okay. Oh my God. Where's the twelve minutes from? We model the piecewise functions. Yeah, then I'll just give it to you the whole thing and let you do it. Back in unit number three. Well, okay. No, we didn't do it that. in unit number three. We what did it that day. You guys were with me for what? Are we what right felt now? like forever. Well, Yes, honey. Uh, that was the day after I broke my ankle. So oh, no clue over there. oh Lucky for you, this is a little bit of an easier version. I wasn't here but you could have gone online because they're all online. I was distracted. Oh, no. She didn't have broke you your ankle. You still had lots of times. 
I was at home. Maybe unbreak your. All right. So in today's lesson, we will work specifically with piecewise linear functions or those that are comprised of linear segments. These are particularly helpful in modeling certain situations, especially those with motion. Mateo is walking to school. It's a nice morning, so he's moving at a comfortable pace. Oh, Leo didn't get one. Because you're a loser. Sorry, Leo. Mateo is walking to school. It's a nice morning, so he's moving at a comfortable pace. After walking for nine minutes, he is six blocks from home. He stops the answer, checks on his phone from his mother. After five minutes standing, so he walks quickly. In six minutes, he walks quickly in six minutes to get a paper he forgot for school. We are going to model Mateo's distance from home D in blocks as a function of the time T in minutes since he left. Guys, this is easy peasy. What did he do for the first six minutes? He walked. He walked. At a comfortable pace. How far? Nine minutes. Nine minutes. Nine minutes. Nine minutes. Sorry. Nine minutes. Okay. Here's nine minutes. How far did he end up at the end of that nine minutes? Six Here's six blocks. Oh my god, you didn't use the group. Oh my god. Oh my god. Now, at the end of their nine minutes, what did he do? No, he did not. He stopped. He stopped still five minutes. What happens when he stops still? What, that's a straight line. What kind of straight line? Horizontal five minutes. One, two, three, four, five. His mom was yelling at him. After that, what does he do? He walks quickly. He walks quickly home for how long? Six minutes. Six minutes. So home is back at the bottom. So he goes down really fast. So six minutes is one, two, three, four, five, six. Done. That's so dumb. That is a piecewise function. There are different parts of that. That kid is dumb. Okay. Determine a formula for the distance he is from home D over the time interval from zero to nine. Okay. So first of all, from zero to nine, what is it? <coughs> what kind of a, what kind of a function is this? What is this? Linear. It's linear. So what does that mean? It means that guy. It means y equals mx plus b. You know your y-intercept. What's your y-intercept? Yes. Oh my gosh. Uh, you guys, <laughs> what is your y intercept? Zero. Oh, zero. Zero. Mm -hmm. He starts at home. How do you find your slope? Y2 two minus y1. Y two y so I'm going to use zero, zero, and I'm going to use nine, six. Okay. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, because I like to do it the easy way. <coughs> there are plenty of challenges. Don't make this a challenge. Okay. What is that? What did I just find? The slope. Okay. So my equation is, oops, not Y equals. D equals, stop. You can use six ninths. I heard from the back row two thirds. I don't care which one you use. Two thirds, because what variable? Simplify. It's normally x, but in this problem they want us to use t. You can put plus zero, but you can technically leave it without that as well. I hate when they use t. Sorry. That's why I put the little curl on the bottom. Determine a formula for the distance he is from home D over the time interval from 9 to 14. Okay, well, you should know what kind of a slope that line has. It's zero slope. So the only thing we need is the Y intercept. Well, what would the Y intercept be? Come over here. It would be 6. So that would be D equals 6. <laughs> the trickiest part of this modeling will be to determine the linear equation for the distance d on the time interval from 14 to 20. Pick two points on this line and form an equation in the form d equals mt plus b. Okay. 
So what are my two points that I'm going to use? Uh, not zero. 14 something and 20 something. Okay, what's the distance at 14? 14 and 6. And what's the distance at 20? Zero. Okay, so I'm going to do 6 minus 0 over 14 minus 20. 6 minus 0 is 6. 14 minus 20 is negative 6. So what is your slope? Negative one. Okay. I'm going to stick with y equals mx plus b until the very, very end. Okay. Then I'll switch it back to the letters that they want. So I'm going to say, okay, y equals negative one x plus b. Do you remember how we find that b? You got to plug in one of the two points that they've given you. Do I care which one? No. What are you feeling? Zero. The zero one? Okay. Make sure that you put the zero. Where does the zero go? Y. Make sure the zero goes in for the y. So zero equals negative one times 20 plus b. What's negative one times 20? Negative 20. So zero equals negative 20 plus b. So what's b? One. B is 20. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to write my final answer. So D equals, what was your slope? Negative, negative 1T, or just negative T if you want, plus what? 20. 20. Good. This is a lot of math. It's, that's a lot of math. Why did Addison sleep? Because she, she's got to go. Yeah, she just kept leaving. She's done it all week. I'm glad you yeah. noticed. Yeah. Oh, why does she get to leave early, though? She because can't she can't. Um, she's not supposed to be in the hallway with all of you because if she gets jostled and you know, yeah, she's the one that brought us over. She would, she would, thank you. All right, let's finish. We'll finish this on Thursday. So the only thing you have to do until I see you on Thursday is a golden rod paper. Are you? Are you? Don't. Yes. Leave the white papers here. I'm going to come collect them. If you don't think you can handle the yellow paper, then leave that up there with your other papers, and I will take that at the same time. Yeah. Are you really coming in tomorrow? If you're really coming in tomorrow, just leave them all. Do not hold on to them all. Yeah. I can handle the yellow paper. No way! Carson, do you need me to hold the yellow paper for you? Do you need?